so what's the plan for today is we'll be uh, covering some of the functionalities like parameters and something related to lods and tags in common so basically the first order date for each customer and uh, you know the second order date for each customer and even the rank functions so let's say if you are comfortable with tableau then you can open power bi and if you are comfortable with power bi uh, you can open tableau in that way you can have an idea of the other tool and uh, yeah that's something planned for today and we'll be kind of using the sample superstores data which is available uh, in the my uh, tableau repository so um, maybe like uh, in a minute if you guys can open the respective tools whichever you want we can get started actually okay so we will go with this way first we'll do uh, some functionality in tableau and we'll try to replicate the same in power bi as well so um in Tableau, generally, you know, we will be connecting to uh, data source in the connection page. And like, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be referring to the sample superstores data, which is uh, available in the repository. So let me connect to the sample superstores data. And uh, for this particular session, only the orders table should be fine. So I'm pulling the orders table inside and the connection pane. Uh, once it's done, I'll just move on to the uh, sheet one. Okay, so the first functionality, as I mentioned, we'll be looking at, you know, the measure uh, selection, which is uh, achieved using parameters. So parameters are basically the dynamic functionality which uh, is provided and based on user selection, you know, we can change uh, the response of the view followed by, a cal by using a calculated field. So the first step uh, uh, to achieve this is basically creating a parameter. So you can just click on the drop down and uh, create parameter. So once we have uh, this particular window, we got to change from float to string. And uh, allowable values, uh, we can change it to list. And here we can list down the values in which we are trying to achieve, you know, using parameter. So we'll just go with three of them sales profit quantity okay so this is something uh, for time being we'll just go with only these three but actually in real time we don't have any limitation we can insert as, as much uh, values we want and uh, we can just give okay uh, once we create parameter maybe we can right click on it and uh, show parameter so this is the first step so once you are uh, done with this then uh, like parameters can be used only by you know creating calculated field uh, for, uh, like for based on the parameter we have created so for that we will just go ahead and uh, create one, one, one calculated field using that parameter so okay so it's going to be a simple if statement let's say if the parameter is equal to uh, like sales then i want to just some sales to come in something like that so if parameter one is equal to so this is a calculated field uh, so what we are trying to address here is whenever user selects sales i want to show the sales whenever user selects the profit i want to show profit whenever user selects quantity i want to show quantity and that's something we are just trying here selection and now we can just uh, use this in view with respect to any or specific dimension so subcategory i'll add we'll just add the parameter selection so based on uh, parameter we select uh, the things uh, changes so this how we generally do this in tableau so any questions or if anyone tried uh, like is it done or have you guys stick somewhere Okay, then let's uh, try to achieve the same thing in Power BI. Uh, okay, so again, I'm just going to connect to the same uh, data source, Excel notebook, and sample superstores. For time being, let's consider only the orders table. And uh, actually, there is no exclusive parameter functionality like how we have in Tableau in Power BI. So what we have to do is like we have to create some data like uh, some separate columns sort of. Then we have to use that in slicer and we have to uh, create some uh, measure 
followed by uh, the column which we have created for parameter. So here we will use this particular functionality enter data. And we'll just name it as view by for the time being view by sales profit and quantity. So with this the user will be able to select actually. So we can just give load and we can put this in slicer. And then now, like how we have created uh, in Tableau, similarly, we have to create a calculated field. So here it's basically a measure. So new measure. So here we can just give it U by. So if selected value U by is equal to sales, then some sales. So if it is not the case here, we will use a nested if actually. So we'll just put comma I in case if it is false. Then we'll write one more if statement again. So if selected value u by is equal to profit, then profit. So similarly, one more thing we have to address, which is quantity. Then again, like if this condition fails, one more if statement. So again, if selected value u by is equal to quantity. So let me add the same subcategory here and view by measure. So actually currently it's blank because uh, nothing is selected. Let's say once you select profit, you are able to get the profit quantity, quantity and sales. If you select, you'll be getting the sales. So this how we achieve, you know, the same parameter selection in Power BI. We'll just use the enter data functionality to create the parameter drop down. Then one measure just to address this view by, and this how uh, we get things similar to parameter in Power BI. So this is the first one. Uh, let's move on to the second one. Mm, so how to get the uh, first order date and uh, second order date. So as uh, most of us are aware, like we'll just go with the um, LOD is uh, to get the um, first order date and second order date of each customer. So let me quickly pull up the customer and order date on all members. Order date. So now to get the first customer, uh, uh, like first purchase date of customer, that's not a big deal. So we can just create calculated field and there we will just use fixed at each customer name level. I just want whenever uh, they have purchased first. So it will be like fixed customer name. So we are kind of fixing at customer name level and what's the output we want is min of order date. So which will uh, give us the first purchase date, first order date. Mm -hmm. So that's actually straightforward, but let's say when we want to go for the second order date, uh, that's uh, something bit different compared to this one actually what we will do is for second order date uh, we will just try to get the list of order dates whichever is greater than you know the first order date on top of that we will just go for only minimum of it something like that so to us again we will use uh, LOD at same customer name level only so second order date so fixed customer name Min so if order date greater than first order date, then order date. And so here, what we are trying to achieve basically is for each customer name, like if their order date is greater than first order date, for example, let's take this particular client. So his first order date is 18th Feb 2017 and he had made three purchases. So with this condition, only these two dates will pass because only these are these two are basically greater than this. So only these two will pass and, and on top of it for each customer, we are just trying to get minimum of it. And that will basically give us the second order date. Discrete, okay. Yeah, so uh, this how we get, you know, get to the first uh, order date or the second and uh, the second order date for each customer in uh, Tableau. 
and uh, just to achieve the same in power bi actually we have to declare some variables use calculate functions and filters things like that so let's quickly move on to power bi and let's see how to achieve you know the same thing so let me create one more table so just to add <clears throat> the customer name and the order date let's keep it this way and let me change the format okay so now uh, just to get the first ordered date um, we will just create a new measure actually so um, new measure okay so again the same thing whatever we did there like in, uh, like fixing at customer name level and getting the minimum order date more or less the logic remains same just the way in which uh, we kind of um, execute or you know the syntax are a bit different here the exact functionality like fixed LOD or we don't have a specific uh, level of detail expressions in power bi so that's why we will use combination of uh, some functions like calculate and um, filters and even sometimes if required we'll declare some variables as well so that's the plan so for example first order date so first actually we will we want the thing to be calculated at each customer name level so we will just declare a variable for the same then um, once we declare variable like we'll just return and in the return output we'll write whatever we want so as we have fixed lod there as i said earlier so here we don't have the exact one so that's why we'll be using uh, calculate function which is used uh, very frequently and the expression so here the expression as in like what's the uh, output i'm expecting so the output i'm expecting is basically the min of order date okay and then we will just kind of uh, filter the filter function is something like where we pass the customer name dimension over there right so similarly here what we are just uh, trying to say is like give me the minimum order date and for each customer and uh, the filter thing uh, take care of the each customer thing here actually and uh, here we have to just go for all orders so basically the table name then we'll kind of say it for each customer so orders customer then it's equal to what are the variable we have declared above c name so just we are this c name the variable will be dynamic every time as the thing passes this c name will be kind of change, uh, changing and it will just check with the customer name from the orders table so that's the execution part okay so this basically gives the first order date let me pull this so if you see for the respective customer whenever they have purchased first is something we uh, we were able to kind of calculate and now just to uh, get to the uh, second order date so same logic whatever we have followed that we will just try to filter the set of dates uh, which is above the first purchase date and among those filtered dates we will just try to uh, get the minimum of it so one more new measure for second order date okay so here actually we have to declare two variables one is customer and the second one is first order date as we want to kind of pass it across so that our uh, c name is equal to selected value first one and where first order date is equal to so again the same calculate function of order date and then um we will actually we have to pass two filter here one for customer name and one for you know just restricting the dates which are is above the first order date so we'll have two filter conditions so filter um, all orders this is the table name orders of customer name equal to c name comma the second filter condition which is the order date should be greater than the first order date okay let's see if it works so now let me pull the second order date so now here if you see the second order date we are able to capture and even for each customer now we have the first order and second order maybe if you want to kind of calculate the gap between those we can use the date diff function and do the same but yeah okay uh, any questions
Oh, okay. Jairam, uh -huh. uh, in the calculate function for the filter section, uh, if we directly write customer name equal to C name, will that not work? Or do we really need to use the filter and all orders as the uh, common syntax? I think all orders is something we have to pass. Uh, I'm not sure about the customer uh, name thing like filter function, but in terms of, let's say if we don't pass all orders, uh, let me show you that. Uh, then in that case, as you see, we are not able to see all the order dates. And again, if you see the second order date will be a bit blank. But let's say if you are planning to present only the first order date and second order date, irrespective of order date, then it's okay. You can just kind of uh, put without all. But let's say in table where you are trying to present all of them, then in that case, all has to be passed. And answering to the second one, uh, that's something I'm not sure, like if filter function is really required. And moving on to the third one, uh, the rank function. So um, again, in Tableau, it's actually straightforward. We can, whenever we want to calculate the rank, we can just use the quick table calculations. So add all numbers, sales. We can add, you know, some sales to text. And you can just right click, uh, go to the quick table calculations, and then we can just give the rank. So that will basically give us the rank. And again, we have four different type of rank, rank modified, rank dense and stuff. Uh, let's not get into that for the time being. So this how we will have the uh, rank being calculated in Tableau. And uh, let's say if we have to do the same in Power BI, then we don't uh, have it straightforward. Like again, we have to use the rank X function DAX and create new measure for the same. So let me create the third table, <clears throat> customer name sales. Okay, so let me sort it. Yeah, so just to get the rank, again, we'll create a new measure. So using the rank X function. So here actually we are kind of calculating it for uh, the customer name. So uh, we have to just pass all the customer names so, or else let's say if we pass only individual customer name, it will kind of get uh, calculate for each customer name then in that case each customer will have their uh, rank as one let's say when we consider if it gets computed at row level then each customer means like if there is no competitive customer or something like what are the sales they have that will be considered as the top and they will have kind of rank as one so that's why we are just trying to pass all our customer and uh, uh, sum of sales Yes. So let me add the. Oh, sorry, actually, we have to create a new measure uh, before passing the sales for the total sales, actually. Yeah. So this is how we kind of calculate the rank in Power BI. And even if you are looking for any uh, more specific functionalities which you like to view, then you can let me know. I can take it up. In the upcoming sessions and we can see how to achieve the same in tableau and power bi